hello everyone in this session we are going to discuss four different multiple access scheme in detail the first one is time division multiple access scheme frequency division multiple access scheme then sdma space division multiple access scheme and cdma so we'll discuss all of this one by one let us have a discussion on the first scheme that is time division multiple access scheme now in digital systems continuous transmission is not required because users do not use the allotted bandwidth all the time in such a cases time division is useful in time division multiple access technique each user is given a particular time slot regularly after fixed interval so if you see here the total time the total time is divided into multiple slot slot 1 slot 2 slot 3 slot 4 and likewise now this slot 1 let's say it is provided to the user 1 slot 2 may be provided to the user 2 then slot 3 is provided to the user 3 so n number of slots are provided to the n number of users however during this time slot the user have the complete availability of the satellite so let's say if suppose slot 1 is provided to the user 1 it means during this time slot user 1 can access the satellite with complete resources means complete availability of its bandwidth so in this case within the given time slot user can access the satellite with tremendous speed as the bandwidth is completely available now in order to avoid the interference between the adjacent time slot guard times are introduced so if you see this blue vertical lines these are used in order to avoid the crosstalk and interference between the neighboring time slots so let's say slot 1 and slot 2 these are the neighboring time slots so to avoid the crosstalks and interference between these two guard this guard time is introduced however these guard times are basically the filters now let us have a look on tdma frame structure so the tdma frame structure is actually made up of three things first preamble information data and trail bits let us have a look on the middle part that is information data so in this the frame contain n number of bursts if you see this this information data is consisting of n number of burst n number of burst means n number of slot if you see this is slot 1 slot 2 slot 3 and n number of slots are there however out of this n number of slot the first slot we call it as a frame supervisory burst and it is useful for identification purpose and it is also useful for synchronization purpose and therefore remaining n minus 1 slots time slots are used by the ground or base station for transmission so remaining means from slot 2 onwards up to slot n these slots are used by the base station where, uh, within which the actual information is transmitted now let us have a look on preamble so this preamble will indicate the start of the frame it provides address of the user and it also useful for making synchronization now what is trail bits so it will this trail bits are indicating that the end of the frame and station will ready to accept the new frame so this is all about tdma frame structure now let us have a look on some of the advantages of tdma so the first and foremost uh, uh, advantage of tdma is it is having very faster data rate so why the data rate is very very faster because the user have complete accessibility of the satellite when they have their particular turn so they can use the complete bandwidth of the satellite now number two advantage it is bandwidth efficient so obviously within a particular time slot user can access the full bandwidth so full bandwidth uh, uses are there it is cheaper than fdma and the last is full power efficiency is possible so what does it mean 
the mobile device can save their battery power by turning off transmitting and receiving data so basically tdma technology was used in the first first generation mobile where uh, if suppose uh, the mobiles who don't want it to uh, make the communication so they may uh, shut down their transmitting and uh, transmitting antennas so this is how the power is supposed to be utilized uh, well uh, the tdma uh, is also uh, used uh, in uh, military applications uh, like uh, for walkie talkie uh, they may use uh, tdma schemes now let us have a look on the next technique that is frequency division multiple access scheme so in in this the different frequency bands are allocated to the different users on the continuous time basis it means every users can now access the satellite in allocated frequency band all the time so what happens here if you see the total time slot is available to the user but they're having now the limitations of the frequency band if you see the earlier case in time division multiple access schemes the total frequency band you can see the total frequency band is available to the user but the time is very very restricted one now if you see the fdma the total time slot is available here but the frequency band is restricted so what what is exactly happening out here so multiple frequency band frequency band 1 frequency band 2 frequency band 3 4 and so on will be provided to the multiple users so let's say frequency band 1 is provided to the user number one so he may assess the satellite for 24 by 7 but only within the particular frequency band only within the particular frequency band so this is what the frequency division multiple access scheme here every bands are acting like a channel which are used only the user to whom it is provided the frequency range for a particular channel is limited depending upon the frequency band in order to avoid the crosstalk between the adjacent channels guard bands are used so if you see this horizontal lines these are used once again to avoid the interference between the adjacent channel let's say for example in order to avoid the crosstalk and interference between uh, channel uh, let's say frequency band 2 and frequency band 1 this guard band is used these are basically the filters these guard bands isolate adjacent channels now let us have a look on some of the advantages and disadvantages of fdma so advantages are like it requires very little synchronization as it is assessing the satellite 24 by 7 so no need of synchronization however in tdma synchronization is the major issue why because you uh, set, uh, users has to uh, assess the satellite for its own turn so satellite will connect to the next user so it needs proper synchronization there now coming to the second advantage of fdma it has very low isi effect isi means inter symbol interference and the third advantage is availability of resources for all the time as i earlier mentioned the resource that is what the satellite is available to the ground station 24 by 7 what are the disadvantages so it requires expensive filters so whatever the guard bands that we are using which are very very expensive filters we require very efficient filters we required it causes a signal spreading and it causes radiation leakage so if the filters are not expensive one if they are not efficient one they may causes signal spreading and radiation leakage now let us have a look on the next technique we call it as a space division multiple assist scheme now mostly space division multiple assist scheme we uh, it is uh, similar to the gps system gps global positioning system now in traditional mobile cellular network system the base station has no information on the position of the mobile units within the cell and it radiates the signal in all possible direction within the cell in order to provide radio coverage so we all know the mobile architecture what happens in the mobile architecture the total geographical area is divided into the multiple cells so every cell is having multiple mobile users 
now every cell is also having the ground station and this ground station is providing the coverage to that complete cell now if suppose the ground station want to connect with a particular mobile user so to connect uh, to that particular user it is providing complete coverage to the total cell which eventually resulting in loss of power or lot of power is required there in the reverse way in the reverse way the antenna receives the signal coming from all possible direction including noise and interference signal so sdma technique is being used by the satellite based mobile services in this sdma technique the base station does not transmit the signal to the entire cell area as in conventional ss techniques but concentrate power in the direction of mobile unit for which the signal is directed and reducing it in the direction where the units are present so basically in space division multiple ss scheme the total power is concentrated only on the person where it is located and it is and not on the rest of the area so that the total amount of power is concentrated over the person only and it will not get wasted sdma can be helpful for multimedia requirement now how basically it is supposed to perform its operation so sdma divides the total geographical area or the space where the users are located into smaller spaces the key element of sdma is one to one mapping between the space division and bandwidth division the bandwidth could be divided according to any multiple as a scheme that is using tdma fdma or cdma thus this technique is compatible with tdma fdma and cdma scheme now let us consider suppose the total geographical area a is divided into the multiple area let's say a1 a2 a3 and so on and similarly the bandwidth is divided into b1 b2 b3 and so on now there will be one to one mapping means the area a will be mapped with b so a1 let's say it is mapping with the b1 a2 is mapping with the b2 a a2 is mapping with the a2 is mapping with the b2 and a3 is mapping with the b3 and so on so every area is having their own bandwidth through which they hold the communication this is how space division multiple access scheme is supposed to be uh, work so in this way depending upon the position of the user signal will get transmitted to it in real time and for that it uses medium access control protocol now coming to the last multiple access scheme that is port division multiple access scheme well this scheme is also called as direct sequence spread spectrum scheme we will see this direct sequence spread spectrum scheme in details in the next lecture now what happens in the code division multiple if we see time division multiple access scheme where every user is having their own turns but the bandwidth is limited in frequency division multiple access scheme every user is having complete accessibility of the satellite for complete time 24 by 7 but the frequency is limited now in code division multiple access scheme what happens the user may access the satellite for 24 by 7 and he may have the availability of the complete bandwidth so if both of the thing is provided to the user then it causes a damage to the system or it causes huge problems in the system as the huge number of users can access the satellite now how to restrict them so we can restrict them by their code which we call it as code division multiple access scheme now in this technique many user transmit their signal on the same channel bandwidth each transmitter receiver pair has a distinct pn sequence thus signal of a particular transmitter are received by its intended receiver only even if many users are transmitted at the same time this method is also called as spread spectrum multiple access scheme 
the signals from the other users will appear as an additive interference which are rejected by the spread spectrum decoder. The level of interference is depending upon the number of users transmitting at any time. The main advantage of CDMA is that the number of users sharing the same channel can be increased or decreased very easily. The large number of users can be transmitted on the same channel if their message are for a short period of time. So in CDMA, each group of user is given a particular code. Many code occupy the same channel, but only users associated with particular code can communicate. The best performance will occur when there is good separation between signal of desired user and signal of other user. So what happens actually here? If you see the every mobile station, let's say there may be n number of mobile station, let's say uh, mobile 1, mobile 2, mobile n number of mobile station, they are receiving the signal from the base station. Now basically to this base station there may be n number of n number of mobiles who are transmitting the signal. Now only those mobile who can properly receive the signal if that mobile is knowing what kind of code is used by the mobile who have transmitted signal to the base station. So that code is basically a PN sequence code, pseudo noise sequence code. Now basically the separation of the signal is made by correlating now what happens here even though it is receiving the same signal but that doesn't means other signals are also not coming to the mobile one if suppose here three mobiles so it means how let's say for example only three mobiles so how many signals coming to the mobile one at least three signals now out of these three signals the mobile one has to receive only one signal and rest of the two signal he has to discard so basically the matching or i can say correlating is there now this mobile is simply going to correlate the received signal with the locally generated signal if the locally generated code is matching with the received signal then that signal is supposed to be accepted otherwise it will be rejected so correlation auto correlation and cross correlation concepts are used there accordingly the signal is supposed to be received so this is all about cdma